Hey guys, welcome to the Artisan channel. I got this package in the mail today and it's freaking awesome. It's made by Retro Flag, which makes it by default interesting to people who love retro gaming such as myself. This here is the Nest Pi 4 case. It is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4, hence its naming sense. What makes this case stand out between other cases is that it looks like an NES and also it has a cartridge, but this is not a gimmick. You can put an SSD in there, slide it in, and it gets internally routed to the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. And then you can use it as an external hard drive. If you have an operating system that supports external hard drives like RetroPie and uh, Raspbian OS, then this is really cool. I got this from uh, AKNES from Amazon, and they sent it over to me. They got this case on itself for uh, $42 and you can get a starter kit as well which has a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, Model B 4 GB RAM as well as an SD card for 32 GB and we got heat sinks for chips and we got a plug converter as well as an SD card reader and an HDMI cable which is uh, micro HDMI to HDMI which is very cool and all of this costs you around 170 bucks on AKNES on Amazon. So the link is in the description down below but you need to buy the SSD separately. Uh, sadly it does not come with this whole kit so you need to buy them separately. Also I'll link some SSDs in the description down below in case you're interested. So let's get into the unboxing of everything over here and just do that. So let's first unbox the Raspberry Pi 4. So we got the Raspberry Pi 4 out there. Let's apply the heat sinks to the chips that matter. Uh, we got a beefy heat sink inside the Nest Pi 4 case, so we don't need to put it on the processor itself. But we're gonna apply it to the smaller chips on the side here, uh, just because it's possible. So after we've done that. Now let's unbox the Nest Pi 4 case. So out of the box we have a USB type C AC adapter for the Raspberry Pi with a European plug, hence the uh, plug that they give us, the converter. And then we have the case itself with some instructions over here, the instruction manual. Let's take a look at the case itself. Wow. This is the cartridge where you can put your SSD in. This is the slot where you're going to seat it in like this. And then it looks like that. Very awesome in my opinion. So what we got inside is a screwdriver as well as some screws over here for the heat sink I guess. And we got the heat sink, which is quite beefy, very nice with a fan inside of it. Please remove the SD card before installing the Raspberry Pi, so keep that in mind. Here we got the heat sink, it's made out of uh, thick aluminum, so it applies to it as such. As you can see, it fits perfectly. And then we're going to later on seat it inside. So let's assemble it. Let's apply the thermal pads to the processor and the chip next to it. We want them to have good contact with the heat sink when you apply the heat sink to it. The heat sink has the right cutouts for the ports of the Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, not to uh, touch the GPIO pins. Insert the USB cables as well as the Ethernet cable inside the case and fit the Raspberry Pi 4 snugly inside the casing. Now let's grab two screws, the two black screws that are provided inside the bag of screws and screw the Raspberry Pi 4 tight to the middle screw posts. And that is that. Now let's apply the GPIO pins to the uh, furthest to the left 
GPIO pins, as uh, mentioned on the label, and attach the connector of the heatsink fan to its right uh, socket. Insert the SSD card bay USB cable to the USB type uh, 3.0 port, and then close up the case. Now, last thing that we need to do is uh, insert the screws. Phew! Now, that was a lot of work to get the screws in there, but now that we're done with that, let's get the SSD drive bay out there. Like this, we put this the back side facing this way. Then we put the top side like this. Now what we got to do is we got to fasten the SSD to the bottom part of the housing. After that, screw these tight. So right now the SSD can just fit in like this. That is a snug fit. And then you close it up and then you got your games inside the SSD, inside the Raspberry Pi 4 plugged in and ready to play. Now of course we have to add the SD card to the side over here, as you can see. And that is that for the SD card slot. Now you got uh, more SD cards that you can stash in here, which is a very nice touch of them. You can just close it up like this, this enclosure for your other SD cards. One running RetroPie and the other one running Resbian OS, stuff like that, you know. And now I got my RetroPie on here with the games in the SSD. So I got it all set up and uh, I got this nifty controller for uh, around like, 20 uh, to 30 bucks and <laughs> I just got it out of the box here as you can see it's the 8-bit Doe N30 Pro 2 a Bluetooth gamepad and yeah it's it's it really suits the uh, aesthetic so I thought this would be a good pickup and if you want to have one of these as well the links in the description down below I linked it for you all and right now as you can see a uh, RetroPie let me just connect so we got RetroPie it got nothing right so let's just put the controller over here and this is the SSD so I set this SSD uh, I mean the Raspberry Pi up for USB uh, ROM surface uh, which you can find out how to do uh, by link in the description down below if you want to turn on USB uh, ROM service you can find out via the link in the description and I'm going to insert it into the Nest for Pi case and right now it's seated in there so I'm gonna turn it off as you can see uh, the safe shutdown feature is working quite well it's not turned off yet it's uh, running a script to turn it off as you can see on the side of the screen right now and it turns it off safely alright it's turned off and now we can turn it on once again and it should pop up with all kinds of ROMs and stuff like that uh, so here we got before when it boots up we got the uh, 8-bit Doe uh, N30 Pro uh, because you know if you pick this up I think you should just pick up something that's aesthetically pleasing and looks exactly like it and this controller is quite good it has uh, dual analog sticks it supports Nintendo Switch uh, Android and PC as well as Re RetroPie and right now we're loading the systems as you can see uh, in emulation station and uh, it's gonna take a while a little bit because the SSD is quite fast it's not going to take as much as when you put this amount of ROMs on uh, your SD card it's much faster than that because when you put it on the SD card it's gonna take really a long time right now we got that all booted up and here we got all the systems if you take the SSD out all the systems will be gone so it really boots it off of the SSD which is really cool in my opinion I don't think you need to swap the SSD, I mean you can just pick up a 512 GB SSD uh, drive and also put it in there and then fill it up with ROMs, so you gotta, you gotta pick one that is uh, suited for your needs. 
So my opinion and verdict on the Nest Pi 4 case is that the people over at Retroflag really had a lot of thought uh, while making this uh, case and I really commend them for that. It's made with some high quality materials for $43 it really delivers and the insides are populated with a Raspberry Pi 4 and a beefy heat sink which is very nice and keeps it nice and cool as well as the cartridge just is genius. The cartridge it populating a SSD and you can just slide it in there is just genius in my opinion which makes it a must get for most of the retro game lovers and Raspberry Pi enthusiasts. This here uh, is the power button but it doubles as a safe shutdown which you can get the script over at uh, the retro flag github. Links in the description down below in case you got yourself an SPI 4 case and uh, you can just press it and it turns off the Raspberry Pi 4 safely without you having to worry about the SD card uh, corrupting and stuff like that which is also very nice and very thoughtful of them of doing that and that is my verdict on this whole uh, setup I'm very happy with it and I'm really going to play a lot more on it and this is something that I definitely will keep playing with for uh, until something better comes out and once something better comes out I'll probably take a look at it so stay tuned like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.